Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Lynn Mass Sportscast, a show which focuses on sports right here in the city of Wynn. The Lynn Mass Sportscast offers you, the viewer, with player and coach interviews, reports from the field, game highlights, and of course, the question of the week. I'm your Sportscast host, Sean Donahue, and we have a great show for you today. We'll be having the Lynn English golf team on to talk about their most recent successes, and we'll have Eli Barkas on from the Lynn Classical Cross Country team. But first, let's go to this week's Sideline Sportscast with Mariani Jimenez. Welcome to the Sideline Sportscast. We head down to Lynn Vocational Technical Institute to highlight the Tigers football team, which stands at 3-3. Three and three. The team goal is, uh, is very simple, to have good character, be a student, and then you're an athlete afterwards. And uh, having as many kids as we have in our program and, and working as hard as we have them working, um, our goals are being reached on a regular basis. Uh, our progress reports look very well every single week. You know, we've had a couple of shots this year already at making the postseason, and uh, we are potentially, possibly, could make it this weekend with a victory over Chelsea. Um, a good football program. Mike Salato's done a great job there. Uh, one of my mentors. But again, I, I think our chances of making it to the postseason look very well, as long as we take care of our business, and some other teams have to take care of business also too. But we should have an opportunity to make it to the postseason. It's without a doubt that these student athletes make their academics a priority. We ask some of the players to tell us what being a Lentech Tiger means to them. Honestly, being a Lentech Tiger means having pride and uh, basically as a family. We're all here as a family. Um, we support each other, encourage each other to do things. Like when we're running in practice, we always encourage each other to run more and faster and last longer in the games. We're always up there for each other, no more pointing fingers. Being a Lentech Tiger really means everything being self, not even self-centered, being as connected as a group, pretty much like our own little society at the school, down to the teaching staff, to the coaches, to the players, and all the students here, especially around even the class council, you gotta be a part of something. I mean, being a Tech Tiger isn't just being your own little individual around here, just all being one to a group of people that you know and enjoy being with. Being a Lin Tech Tiger means a lot. It means being a family, working together as one. When one needs help, another one's there for you to have your back, no matter what it is, no matter what. The obstacle is Lintech people will be there for you. With a record of three and three, the Tigers are putting the effort to win over their league opponent, the Chelsea Red Devils, whose record stands at two and four. With the win Saturday night, the Tech Tigers still have hopes for a playoff berth. For the Lin Mass Sportscast, I'm Mariamani Jimenez. Welcome to the Coach's Corner. Here with me today to discuss their most recent successes, we have the Lynn English High School golf team. Uh, with me today, we have Nick Madden, Christopher Cole, and uh, we have Joe Cowling. Guys, thanks for being here today. Um, I know your schedule's busy with school, and you got a lot going on, especially homework, so um, I appreciate you coming down and uh, talk to us in our viewership about your recent success. Um, so, since 1997, the Lynn English golf team has never made it to uh, qualify for the state championship. And that's exactly what these guys have done. Uh, you didn't take the title home, but it's still an incredible feat. Before we get too much into your season, uh, let's talk a little bit about you guys and how you got involved with the team. Uh, Nick, we'll start with you. I started my freshman year, and I just kind of always liked golf. I had been playing it a few years before that, and seen you now, so I guess it lasted. So now you've been playing for four years through and through. Have you seen any significant improvements from when you were a freshman to what you are now? Uh, yeah, definitely. I saw a lot of improvement. My coaches helped me a lot from how I used to play to what I play now. Now, Christopher, tell us a little bit about your story. Uh, I joined the team last year, and uh, ever since I was 10 years old, I did the clinics up at Gannon, and our coach, Tara, she was up there, and she helped me out and she, uh, she got me interested into the game and she's been a great influence ever since then and uh, it's just a big stuck reason, here. Yeah, a big reason that I joined the team. Cool. Now what year are you in? Um, sophomore year. So you're a sophomore. Um, I'd say qualifying for the state tournament is not only a goal that you have but pretty much a priority at this point. Oh yeah, it was, it was huge to be able to make it and especially with a team loaded with seniors. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was great for the team. Yeah, send them off well, you know. Yeah, That's great good. encouragement. Uh, Joe, let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, yeah, I've always played golf. i played with my grandpa since God knows when, and I had always played up Gannon, and Tara, our coach Tara, she always worked up there and saw me playing all the time, and she got me right on the team when I got into freshman year. 
Now, one thing, one thing about golf, I mean, I remember back when I was in high school, and the teams that got the wreck were basketball, football, baseball, um, the, the general team sports. But uh, golf, tennis, those sports never really got a lot of recognition. And I'm not really sure why it is. But it, it, does it hit close to home for you guys? I mean, you work hard too, right? Yeah, I work all the time. I mean, we head up, we head up for practices every week, and we work hard because we want to represent Lynn English well as a school. Do either of you really have an, an idea of why golf doesn't get the recognition it should? It's because it's not as a flashy of a sport, basketball, football, baseball, like you said, big, big guys hitting, playing aggressive sports, golf is more calm and toned down, so it takes a more attentive audience to enjoy it. Same that, thing with tennis. That's a great point, and you guys, some of you guys are tennis players too. Yeah. Um, the, the, the skills that you develop in golf are a lot different than in any other contact sport or fast-paced game. I mean, patience is one of the truest virtues and the hardest virtues that it was for me to learn. I'm still learning it today. Um, but that game, it, it's incredible. I'm not good at it. I spend more money on balls than I do on my greens there. Um, but I, I, can, I have a significant amount of respect for you guys and what you do. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your coach, Coach Tara. Seems like you guys all have a great relationship with this coach. Um, tell us, what does she bring to the table? What, what, what benefits does she bring to the Lenny English golf team? Well, she was, uh, back in her time, she was a great golfer. And still to now, this time, she's been winning tournaments and everything. And she's been able to bring her knowledge of the game and how she handles uh, pressure situations. And she teaches that to us. Okay. Um, now, uh, Nick, you're a senior. Christopher, you're a sophomore. And Joe, you're in what year? I'm a senior, too. You're a senior, too. Um, plans for college. What, what are you thinking, Nick? Uh, I'm thinking about, like, technical school. i more into computers, nice. stuff like that. Okay. Any specific type of uh, C++ programming, web design, social media? I uh, my CCNA. I'm more into networking. Wow. Okay. Excellent. That's an incredible tool for you to possess. Networking is really everything. You're only as big as your network goes. Uh, Joe, what are your plans for the future? Uh, I really like engineering, so I've been looking at a lot of engineering schools in the New England and New York area. So. All right. Engineering takes a lot of math skill. Yeah. And you're all good with that? Yeah, not pretty me, good. Not so much. <laughs> uh, so you guys are in your senior years. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about leadership. We've got about three minutes left in the interview. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about leadership. That year from junior to senior year, um, it was a lot of pressure on me and a lot of the guys that I knew because we had big shoes to fill. We knew about the uh, past players who were there and how good they were. And um, it, it's uh, naturally you're going to look up to them. Um, were there any difficulties that you guys faced in, in transitioning from just an athlete to being a leader athlete? Uh, there were players last year that really held the team together, kind of got us where we are today. So there was a lot to fill in their place. What about you, Joe? I'd say that over the years we've, uh, like Chris and his, twi his brother Matt, and we had a couple, we had another sophomore. Well, we've developed pretty good relationships with them. So it was really easy to keep control over a team that you know really well. And mostly seniors, we knew a lot of each other as well. Cool. Now, Chris, I know that golf is definitely in your future. Um, now, you guys are definitely going to play, but are you going to play competitively still? I'm not sure about competitively, but I'll definitely still play. Work on your craft. Yeah, same as him. I don't really plan on pursuing the PGA or anything like that. All right. You never know, man. I mean, I mean that's good that you're, you're humble right now. So um, continue working on your craft. You never know what happens. Um, just like you said, it all started with Tara. It could be a better golf player out there who could recognize you. Um, these guys are the representatives for uh, today's uh, Coach's Corner, the Lynn English golf team. Uh, you guys were qualifiers for the state tournament. Uh, I wish you the best of luck in your endeavors. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, Nick Madden, Christopher Cole, and Joe Cowan. Why don't we go to this week's Game of the Week? Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Manning Field for Commonwealth Conference football. Lynn Tech looking to go over 500. They're two and two. Taking my Minuteman coming in at one and three. Tech is going to get the ball first. The kick is away. Bounces up to Gravely at the 16 yard line. Up the sideline. Slips a tackle. Breaks another tackle. Gets to the outside. They got an angle on him, but he's going by. He's gone. Eighty-nine yards for the touchdown.
What an auspicious debut. 17 seconds in. Tip. Picked off. They tipped it in the air and John Aparicio picked it off. And he picked saying touchdown. What does the official say? Official says touchdown. The lineman's dream. 6-1, 3-10. The senior picked it off. And everybody and his brother was pushing and shoving one way or the other. Laura rolling, looking, lets it fly. And Tech has doubled their fun. Herrera boots it through. Gravely coming to the near side, steps up inside and carries people into the end zone, standing up for the touchdown. They fake it, Laura keeps, looking for the corner, he's gonna walk in. Laura gets it down, moves in. They give it to Fian, he deserved it, he got him down there. Lintech wins it 35 to nothing. Their third win of the season. They go over 500 at 3 and 2. 211 yards rushing, 52 passing, 13 first downs. All of you young hockey fans should know that tryouts for the Lynn Chiefs Junior High School hockey team will be held this Sunday, October 26th at Phillips School in Andover. Registration begins at 4.30 p.m. and the tryouts will run to about 6.30 p.m. Uh, tryouts are for 7th and 8th graders only. Full equipment is required, including mouthpieces. The fee is $25 and a parent or legal guardian is required to be at the tryouts to sign a release for questions. Please call Brian Gauthier at 617-799-0054. Both classical and English high schools are seeking varsity coaches. Currently, classical is in search of coaches for winter track, girls basketball, cheerleading, and varsity softball. English is in search of coaches to lead their varsity softball team. Please send all applications to Barbara Rafuse, Human Resources Manager of the Lynn Public Schools, to 100 Bennett Street, Lynn Mass, 01905. Please include a statement granting permission for community staff review of credentials, a current resume, three written letters of a reference, as well as documentation of education and coaching in that specific sport. The classical boys JV soccer team defeated Salem this week with a score of 3 to 0. On Tuesday at Salem, Martin Ramos would lead things off with a first half goal with the assist from Francisco Orozco. Eric Lopen would score on a penalty kick and Erskine De Jesus would make it 3 to 0 with a second half goal to sure up the win. The Rams JV team improves to 2, 8 and 2. Go Rams. In other soccer news, the St. Mary's boys soccer team hosted arch rivals Bishop Fenwick this week at Manning. The game would end in a tie as Noah Camello scored the late goal for St. Mary's. The end would result in a tie, but the result is that St. Mary's and Fenwick will share this year's Catholic Central Large Crown. In football news, Westland Pop Warner A squad wraps up their regular season with a 37-0 victory over the Boston Bengals on Sunday the 19th at Boston English High School. The D squad would also do their part in defeating Boston 32-0. Both teams are headed to the postseason. Go Rams! Hi, I'm Nathaniel. You're watching Lynn Can TV. Thanks for tuning in. Here with me now to represent the Lynn Classical Cross Country team, we have Captain Eli Barkas. Eli, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me, Sean. So, Eli, you're a captain over there. You're a sophomore. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. I mean, that's that's an, an, an outstanding accomplishment. Uh, you know, you're an underclassman, and you've been picked to represent uh, the leadership on your team. What does that mean to you? Uh, it really just means a lot of stepping up, you know, a lot of uh, taking command. We have four captains for the guys. We have two juniors and two sophomores, and uh, we don't have any seniors on our team. So it really just means that we have more time to grow as a team and just grow as leaders. Now, you've been doing the cross-country gig since your freshman year. Mm -hmm. um, running, it's some sort of passion in your life. I don't understand why. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was never a fan of running. Um, what about this? I mean, why is it so appealing to you? Um, I think 
really, I just have a, I've had a love for it for a long time. I'm not even sure why, but I just like the feeling that it gives me. You know, it makes me feel like I'm doing something with my time. I'm not just sitting on the couch doing something. Yeah, no, I can, I can dig it. I mean, I've had friends who have been big runners, and uh, for me, I mean, I've always kind of worked on a football program, so sprints were a big part of it. Right. Um, but the long distance side of things, I mean, I was never able to do that. In fact, uh, our coaches used to make me run the two mile and indoor track <laughs> just for laughs. Uh, and eventually what would happen is they would start other events while I was continuing mine. Um, so track was never my game. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, there's a certain level of meditation um, that right. you can achieve while running and you get put into this like state where like you block everything out. Is that, is that the case for you too? Right, it really just helps me clear my mind. Um, I can just be me while I'm doing it. I don't have to think about anything. I don't have to worry about anything. It just calms me down. Now, you've had some changes to your teams. Uh, you've got a new coach. Mm -hmm. You've got two new players. Uh, let's talk about your new coach. Uh, our new coach is Mr. Russo, and uh, this is his first year coaching any team, really. But he's really stepped up, and he's just done an amazing job. And he's uh, helped bring a whole new level of intensity to it. Okay. Um, any difference that you're noticing in this year's coaching staff from last year's coaching staff? This year's coaching staff, we're, uh, we're definitely pushing it a little bit harder, but we're still uh, getting help from last year's coach, uh, Mr. Hayward. Nice. Great guy, and uh, he just really loves the program. Nice. Excellent. Um, now, your new teammates, these guys have helped you out this year. Yeah, we uh, acquired Thomas Mackin. He's a transfer from St. Mary's, and uh, Gilly Karamba, who actually came over from the Congo over in Africa last November. And uh, they've really just helped push us up to where we need to be. And uh, they've, given, they've given me something to push up against because they just run amazing times. Now, how did Gilly fit in in her brand new lifestyle? I mean, it's probably a lot different here than it is in the Congo. Was she nervous? Was there anything that the team did to make her feel comfortable? Uh, Gilly, he... he. <laughs> sorry, Gilly. Sorry, Gilly. <laughs> uh, Gilly actually adapted really well. He ran uh, spring track with us, and the coach just immediately recognized that he had, like, an amazing just running potential. And, you know, he's just kind of been something that he's an asset to the team. We can stick him anywhere. He can really do anything. All right. I'd like to talk a little bit, but before we get into your recent success, I know that you'll be going to States. You'll be going to the NEC meet that's this mm -hmm. weekend. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the difference. I mean, cross country is a lot different than track. Right. Um, tell us about that. Uh, really, we get grouped together a lot. I mean, it's... It's a common mistake. It's not even anything big. It's just that uh, cross country is more running within the woods, while track is more running around a track. Right. And uh, track tends to have different events, while cross country tends to usually just be a 5K or 3.2 miles. Okay. So they have different events, and you guys are just really running a race, essentially, mm -hmm. or a few of them. Um, now, you have really three type of running activities. You have cross country, indoor track, which is in the winter, right. and then you have spring track, which is outside uh, in the springtime. Yeah. Um, do you play any of those? Uh, actually, I do spring track also, but uh, I don't do winter track because I do swimming instead. But uh, I absolutely love spring track. I really, uh, I do. I just, there's something about just running around in a circle for so long, I have no <laughs> idea why. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I mean, what you're doing, every step's an improvement. So, I mean, it's measurable, and it's right. measurable by the distance that you're going. I've, I've always kind of been intrigued by runners and swimmers uh, because you're not competing against, really, the other guy. As right. much as you think that, you, he's on the end of the lane. It's more of right a fight with you. yourself. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. Uh, there is a certain sense of um, toughness that comes with running. Right. right, and it's a misconception that a lot of people know. They, they, they do track, they're not tough enough for football. They're not tough enough for hockey. Right. And that's not the case, because if you ask a lot of these linemen who play football, I bet you they can't run in the events that you run in. Right. Um, no, track in cross country, really, it's a lot about setting a personal best time, or a PBT. And you just want to chip away time off that more and more as uh, the year goes on. Every, every second counts. Right, exactly. Okay, so now you guys have had some success this year. We got about two minutes left in the interview. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, states. This isn't your this isn't your first appearance in the state tournament. Actually, is it? it is my first appearance it is. in the okay. state tournament. Now, classical's first appearance in the state tournament. Classical's in a long time. first appearance in the, in the state tournament. Because when I was in school, class like track wasn't our thing. It was more right. like our right, work football. Off of football, right? Uh, but now you guys have built this program. It's gone going a long way. It's the first time you guys have been in states. Um, NECs are coming up. 
Right. That's not news to you. No. You've been um, there before. I've been there before. I've done that. And uh, really, NECs are just an amazing thing. Everybody always runs their best time. It's, it's like, it's crazy. It's almost a law of nature. Now, are there any athletes out there in your uh, Northeastern Conference that you're worried about um, that you need to gear up for and kind of uh, bring your personal best? Peabody. Peabody. The entire school of Peabody and Marblehead, really, um, they're both amazing schools. They're known for their cross country. Uh, the coach over at Peabody, Fernando Braz, really just runs an amazing program. And uh, he runs a camp over the summer, too, that I'm uh, looking into. Okay. You can be a part of that. Um, you know, it sounds like coaching is going to be something that you do in the future. So um, continue your great success. Uh, appreciate it. Eli Barkas, Lynn Classical Cross Country Team. Eli, thanks for being here. Uh, why don't we go to this week's Question of the Week. On October 19, 2014, this NFL quarterback set the NFL's all-time passing touchdown record with 509. Who is he and what team does he play for? Tweet your answers to our Twitter handle at Lynn Sportscast for your chance to win a free pizza from Tony Lena's on Boston Street. Well, that's our show for this week. Thanks for tuning in and make sure to tune in next time for more news and info in Lynn Sports. If you have a sports story, if you just want to give us some feedback, you can visit us at www.lincamtv.com slash LinnMA Sportscast. We're also on YouTube, Twitter, and on Facebook at Lynn Sportscast. We want to say thank you to all of our guests, but that's it for this week's edition of the Lynn Mass Sportscast. From the studio here at LinnCamTV, I'm Sean Donahue, wishing you all the best.